thing about the university and what it stands for, and it's just, uh, again, it's just a great honor to be here. And how would you kind of describe yourself as a coach? What's important to you as a coach? Um, you know, you know, I believe in uh, our guys. I mean, they got to be accountable. You know, we got to build trust. They got to be tough. I mean, I think toughness, that's the one thing. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, said, Coach, what was it like watching the championship game or the game versus Alabama? What would you notice? I said, I noticed how tough Ohio State was, you know, just physically, mentally tough. And growing up in that environment, that's, that's really important. I mean, it's kind of, you know, my roots. And, uh, you know, just I think that's, that's important, you know, being accountable, saying who you are, having integrity. You know, if you're going to do something, you do it. And so, um, you know, that, a little bit like that. Coach Todd Porter from the Canton Repository, taking over an offense that scored a lot of points, put up a lot of yards last year, particularly in those last three games. How much of a challenge is it to improve upon that along with it? Yeah, yeah obviously, I think the first thing you got to do is you got to keep challenging the returning players and you got to motivate them. Um, you got to keep pushing them. And that's going to be probably the biggest, uh, besides that, developing the younger players. I think those two things are going to be very uh, paramount for what happens. Um, we scored a lot of points. We were a, an extremely efficient offense, but we weren't perfect. And you, you strive for perfection. That's how I am. I'm going to strive for that. I know Ed's the same way. And, uh, you know, we're just going to keep pushing our guys and pushing our guys and pushing our guys. I mean, that's that's the key to it. They got to keep working to get better and wanting to get better. Back row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach Steve Hellwagon with Twenty Four Seven Sports. Uh, just the question I have is: you take this job and you have to go in and recruit Joe Burrow and Torrance Gibson and build relationships, and perhaps you were already recruiting one or both of those guys at Nebraska. Just go through that whole process with both those guys: the ups, the downs, the what you had to sell them on, what they need to find out about you and all that. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I knew of those guys. Um, at the University of Nebraska, we, we had to commit early. And it took us out of the race for a 2015 quarterback. So as the recruiting process, because um, he committed, I think, in February, around this time a year ago, <clears throat> that we, we kind of backed off those guys. But I knew of them. Stayed in touch with some guys here and there, but uh, they they were aware. I've seen guys be at my areas when I would be out on the road recruiting or as offensive coordinator, I'd go see all the offensive guys. So I might swing by a school here, swing by a school there to see a guy to check in on them. So um, there were relationships. Uh, Joe, obviously, uh, you know, has strong ties to Nebraska with his family. Um, and so being able to get into his home and just kind of letting them know the lay of the land of what actually took place in our process over there um, to be able to just sit down and spend time with them, really, and just get them the chance to see who I am, get a chance to know them and the family, and the same with Torrance. You know, I think it was we, we knew Torrance uh, at, at University of Nebraska. We recruited a player. Even two years ago, when, when he was there, we, we, we saw him practicing and those types of things. But again, it was one of those things we kind of really weren't looking for quarterbacks at the time. We went and uh, had the opportunity just to sit down and visit with mom and, and go. Every, every time I could go out, I went and saw those guys. With upperclassmen in front of them, what's been the talk about redshirting those guys? It seemed like an obvious decision, but you never know what you're training. Never know, about. right? You never know. The one play away, you never know. Cardell Jones is going to win the national title for you, right? I mean, you just never know. So that's what you tell them. And they're going to develop, you know, under Coach Meyer's system here and what he's done everywhere he's ever been. Quarterbacks have been extremely, extremely successful. And I think they saw that. They thought they, they saw the opportunity to come and play in an offense where they could get better. They saw a chance to play at a program that's going to develop them as young men, as student athletes. And they, want, they wanted to be here at the, the Ohio State University. So... Uh, my hat's off to them. They're going to compete, and and our guys know they're going to compete. So, Hi, Tim. Dave Biddle from Bucknuts. Along those same lines about Joe Burrow, there was a lot of talk that he was, um, maybe not offended, but disappointed that Nebraska never stepped up with an offer. Um, did you have to do a lot of smoothing over there with him after you took the job here at Ohio State? Yeah, more discussions than smoothing over. I think once they realized, I mean, when you're working at a university, you obviously support the university and what's going on. And 
w you know, once once we made the change and we came here, we were able to disclose a little bit kind of how all the process took place, the numbers, how we were recruiting, who we were getting, those types of things. And I think once they, they saw that and saw it was genuine, it was a, here, here's what happened, I, th I think they felt really comfortable. And then as we got to know each other, I think, I, I know they know, they felt really good about it. He doesn't have a, a super strong arm, but he seems like he does so many things well. Just talk about his game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, coach's kid, tough. You know, he's a – I got a chance one day to watch him play basketball. What a competitor. I mean, driven, just – there's sometimes guys that can jump higher or run faster or whatever in that game, but, boy, he was just playing his guts out. And you got to love that. And he's a coach's kid, and he's smart. He brings a lot of it factor and intangibles to him. And uh, a lot of times, those are the guys that end up being very successful as quarterbacks because they're going to they're going to put the grind in, they're going to put that work in to be able to be that guy. And final uh, questions, uh, front row Tim. Uh, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. First on Burrow, did you tell him it was both Bellini's fault? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, as, as you go into your meeting room now, do, do you do you set your players in seats? This is the first guy, second guy, third guy, fourth guy. Are you that kind of coach? And number two, uh, well, I'll ask you number two first. I mean, but how, how do you kind of arrange things? No, right now, um, I'm trying to meet them more as people, not as position depth chart type guys. I'm trying to get to know them a little bit, get, let them get to know me. You know, we're, we're a little bit, you know, we're in a unique position. I mean, number one, I'm replacing a, a great guy. I mean, he did an outstanding job here, and, and – uh, I'm coming in here and have to bond with, with three super young men, four, really, more than that. There's seven guys, gotten all the walk-ons, but I got to bond with all those guys in that room. And uh, before I could really coach them and reach them, I got to get to know them. And so that's kind of where I'm at at this point. The other thing, uh, it looks like, based on what, what, you, what we've been able to see, Cardale's the only one of those three that's probably going to be full go for the spring. How much does that kind of hamstring you trying to get an evaluation going, Tim. I mean, uh, you know well, what I mean? I don't know if it hand, did you see him throw? I don't know if it hand, yeah. hand streams. No, but you know what I mean? But, but you want to give all three, I think. You know, I, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, you know, I think that one thing is they got a lot of game experience under their belt, you know, both Braxton, um, you know, JT. I mean, those guys, they, they've they played a lot of ball games, took a lot of snaps. Um, you, you could just put the film on and have the opportunity to evaluate those guys a little bit. So, and, and even really, Cardell's, you know, played a fair amount, but there's still growth in all, all of those guys. There's no question. They'll be the first ones to tell you when you if you had asked them. So, uh, gets a chance to maybe see some of the younger guys, what Stephen can do, and those things. What does it probably come down to, though, in your mind? What is the cutting line for a quarterback, the starting quarterback? What makes usually makes the difference? Winning. They got to win. They got to they got to make the guys around them better. You know, they got to not turn the ball over, get the ball to the right guys. Usually that equates to winning. If, if they're making the players around the better, they're doing the right things, getting the ball to the right guys at the right time, getting us in the right protections, we're probably going to be winning. So um, that's how you're able to evaluate the, the production of a quarterback. It's the offense. It's not always him or his statistics. Front row left, Doug. Uh, Doug Lee Maurice with Cleveland.com. Philosophically, do you believe that you could play two quarterbacks in the fall, or do you want the guy? Well, I don't. Well, I don't know. I haven't given that a whole lot of thought. How it is, um, really haven't. And are you certain that Braxton Miller will be on the on the team in 2015? Yes. And last question: Have you had much chance to talk with Braxton? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ari, last question. Right here's Ari Washburn, Cleveland.com. Sorry, um, Torrance Gibson um, is obviously one of the more highly rated guys that's in your class right now. Um, but a lot of programs were recruiting him as an athlete, not necessarily as a quarterback. When you watch his film, what makes you so sure that that's the right position for him, and how do you break down the way he plays that position? I, I think he's a special player with the ball in his hand. There's no question about it, and. Again, some of the things I talked about winning, you know, he's able to make the players around him better. He's able to move the offense. Um, 
you know, like all quarterbacks, even the guys we have here, there's still some mechanical things or technique things or knowledge things that they still have to pick up in order to function at the highest level that they can. Joe, Torrance, they're, they're no different. They're going to have to come in. They're going to have to learn. They're going to have to improve. They're going to have to maybe do a couple of things different than what they normally done. But athleticism, talent-wise, intangible wise he's a he's a winner he's another guy he's won championships he's been able to go into a program and turn that program around to win it takes something to be able to do that and i believe that i think when a guy's a division one top-notch quarterback he's got to get people around him to play that way and win and and that's part of being tough and it's part of part of all the things that we had talked about up here a little bit earlier what i stand for and believe in and and i think he possesses those things all right, thank you.